Hello, and welcome to this introduction to Nmap tutorial brought to you by Ajax. In this first video, we'll be discussing how to use Nmap, a powerful network mapping tool. In the second video in this series, we'll do a walkthrough tutorial of Nmap. If you're already familiar with Nmap or just want to see how it works, you can skip this video and go straight to the second one. Now, because Nmap can do so much, this video will cover just the basics of Nmap and give you a good foundation to do and learn more than you do right now. We'll start off in this first video by talking about what and where Nmap is used and how to install it and its basic command structure. In the second video we'll go through some examples and um, in the description below you'll be able to download some of the example output files we'll be discussing. So with that let's go ahead and get started. So first off what is Nmap and where is it used? Um, so as stated at the beginning of the video, Nmap is a powerful network mapping tool with a lot of features that ran usually from the command line. If you're from, unfamiliar with what network mapping is, network mapping is determining what hosts and ports are available on a network. And so some of the common use cases of Nmap include um, conducting the early stages of a penetration test, um, network mapping by system admins or security managers. Um, a lot of organizations, especially enterprises, don't actually know all of the devices on their network. And so Nmap is one of the tools that can help them figure out what is running on their network. Um, a third use case is academic research. And lastly, you can use Nmap to run diagnostics on your home network. So, for example, you may notice that your internet has slowed down significantly um, and you suspect that somebody may be stealing your Wi-Fi and so you could use Nmap to figure out what devices are on your network. And so now that we've talked a little bit about what Nmap is, let's go ahead and walk you through how to get it installed. So if you're using Kali Linux, it's going to come pre-installed on it, so you won't need to do anything. If you're using a different operating system, so um, if you're using a Mac, Windows, another uh, Linux distro, um, go to nmap.org slash download.html and then follow the instructions that are there um, for your operating system. Um, this should go pretty quickly and it's pretty straightforward. Um, if you do run into errors, um, feel free to comment below and we'll try to answer them. Um, another good resource, of course, is Google and Stack Overflow. Um, <clears throat> now, as a quick note, there is a GUI version of Nmap, which is called ZenMap. Um, we're not going to cover th that tool in this tutorial, but you can learn more about it at nmap.org slash ZenMap. All right, so go ahead and pause the video here and then resume it once you have Nmap installed. All right, so at this point, you should have Nmap installed, so let's move on to the next part. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so go ahead and uh, pull up a terminal, and we'll, we'll talk about some of these things. So Nmap mimics the command structure of most command line tools, um, and it goes like this. So you have Nmap followed by your options, which um, are also called flags. Um, and then your IP addresses or your domains. Um, with Nmap, you can scan multiple addresses or domains at the same time, or you can do just uh, one. So there are also some commands here that require um, you to have root privileges, um, but Nmap will, will let you know what those are. Um, and if it does require root privileges, make sure that you are authorized to, to do that, to access root. And so with that, now let's now go ahead and review some, but definitely not all, of Nmap's options. Um, we're going to post these in the description below so that you can review them um, at your own leisure or refer to them as you do your own scans. Alright, so um, this first one is with IP addresses or domains like we talked about. You can either do a specific domain um, or IP address. You can also do a block of IP addresses. Um, if you're unfamiliar with um, CIDR notation, um, I recommend reviewing that. What this 10.0.0.0 slash 24 means is we're going to scan all the hosts on um, the last 
um, section of the IP address. So in that case, it's going to be about 255 hosts. Uh, you can do a specific domain. So let's say you want to scan a website. You can just put in um, www. whatever the domain is. Um, and then you can also do multiple addresses, and um, those addresses are separated by a space. Um, the other thing that you can do is, um, and we're going to now break these down into categories according to the official NMAP um, section, how, how NMAP officially um, categorizes everything. We're not going to include all the options in each of these categories, but we are going to cover some of them. So here under target specification is a dash dash exclude, and so that can exclude IP addresses you do not want to scan. So let's say you have a big net block that you're trying to scan, and you, or let's say you're scanning your home network, and you know that you um, don't want to scan, let's say your gaming device, your desktop, and your smart TV, because you already know what those are. You can go ahead and do the dash dash exclude, um, and then it will exclude those IP addresses. Um, the next one is host discovery. Um, so here we have dash capital P dash, um, da sorry, dash capital P capital N. Um, and that'll treat all the hosts on as online. So NMAP will typically um, go through, figure out first what hosts are online, and then it'll do some of the more advanced scans on them. Um, the other thing um, with NMAP is the commands are case sensitive. So watch out for that. Um, then there's dash uh, capital P capital O, which is an IP protocol ping. Um, the next section or category are scan techniques. So NMAP by default just scans for TCP connections. Um, th this first one will do a TCP sync scan. Um, there's also a TCP acknowledgement scan. Um, and you can look those up online and um, learn what the differences are if you aren't familiar with SYN and ACK. Um, the other one is dash S capital U, and that's a UDP scan. And then the last one is trace route. Um, and so that'll just trace the hot path to each host. All right, so these next ones, um, this is the port specification. This is one you'll probably use pretty often, and it's dash lowercase p, and then you put in your port ranges. So you can scan a specific port or set of ports. So you could put in dash p22 or dash p to 100. Um, there's also there are also some commands where you can scan all of the ports. So if you do dash p dash, that'll scan all ports from one um, to 65535. Um, the other thing is that there is a port zero. It's not commonly used, um, and so by default, Nmap doesn't scan for that port. But sometimes attackers will um, run some of their applications through port zero. Um, and so NMAP does give you the option to scan for that. Um, if you want to scan all of the ports, including port zero, you do just dash P zero dash. Um, <clears throat> the next category is service or version detection. Um, and so it'll look at your open ports and tell you what the service is and what the version info is if, if it's able to detect that. So let's say it um, it finds Telnet. It could tell you the specific version of Telnet that's running. It could tell you the specific version of uh, SSH. Um, and that really gives you um, some good information to be able to figure out um, if there are any vulnerabilities on the service that they're running. All right, so the next one is OS detection, um, and that's dash capital O. You can also uh, tell NMAP to, um, to guess what the operating system is more aggressively by dash dash OS scan dash guess. Um, and so it's not uncommon for NMAP to not know um, what, the op what an operating system is. Um, but um, with OS scan guess, um, like it says, it'll do it more aggressively. Um, the results may be a little more inaccurate with that, um, but it may get you in the right direction. Um, the other category is output. Um, and with that, there are, there are kind of three main types of files and map outputs to besides um, standard out. 
Um, there's an Nmap format, an XML format, and a greppable format. Um, if you're not familiar with what um, grep is, uh, I recommend looking that up. But in short, it allows you to search from the command line. Um, so the way that you do that is you just put in um, your desired output command and then um, type in the file name after that. You can also do dash O capital A and that'll output all three formats at the same time. And then um, just lastly, this kind of follows under the miscellaneous section, um, but there's the option dash A and that'll enable simultaneously OS detection, version detection, um, script scanning, and trace route. And then there's also dash lowercase v, and that'll print out detailed debugging info. So um, if you're in a scan and you find that you need to know more about how that scan found what it found, running dash v is a good option. All right, so now that we've discussed what nmap is, um, installed it, and gone over some of the basic command structure, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the, to the next video and then we'll go through, through some examples in part two.